Hey there. So I decided to do a quick little screencast so you can to, to go over some questions people had about the unit plan. So I am working on your draft units, but since I saw this as a common question, I just wanted to get this out there. Okay, so if you're looking at our screen here, um, I'm looking at the template in the quantitative data on learners for your unit. Now, um, you're really just following the prompts, okay? So it's not really any more complicated than that. Where some people I think run into issues is they're trying to do a unit plan for one student or two students or something like that. And um, in general, you wanna do your unit plan for more than that, um, a small group at least, or a couple of students. But what this section is about is kind of getting the, the data background on your class or the, the students that will be af affected or involved in this unit. So um, after you've described the class, then you go into this quantitative data uh, section. Number one is really just saying, hey, you need to include this class test score sheet. And that is, if you scroll down a little bit farther, it's just right here. And all you're doing is, it tells you don't include the names of your learners, you just use initials. And you're going to, you can create a table or just tab it to format so it's easy to read. You have the student's uh, initial, um, their score on some type of standardized assessment. So that could be, um, a GAA score, if they're taking GMAS of some kind, that kind of score, a score related to, hopefully related to your uh, unit in some way. Um, so if you, if your students haven't taken any type of uh, assessment in that area, then what you could put here is maybe um, their general IEP scores, uh, if you've done any sort of assessments through that, uh, or, because you should have had, you should have something there as far as that goes, even if it's um, baseline data or current, uh, semi current data on how they do with um, reading, reading levels or uh, writing levels or math levels, depending on what your unit's about. Okay. So here you would just list, and if you have, um, like I said, hopefully you're using more than one student, you would list them from highest to lowest. OK, uh, because we just want to see kind of the range of what you're looking, what we're looking at for your class. So for some of you, this may be very short, maybe a couple of students, um, maybe three or four, maybe eight, maybe 10. You know, I know most of you have smaller class sizes. That's OK. That's what you're putting here. OK, yeah, some of you, I think, are making it way more complicated than it has to be. All right. So once you have that figured out, then what you do in this section in number two you briefly describe your group's overall achievement level based on the scores presented. So you're just going to talk about, hey, my students score range from this to this. Um, these students are particularly strong in this, or the class is particularly strong in this area. This, though, is an area of weakness. Or for these specific students, here's areas of strengths, weaknesses in this, in this whatever area you've assessed. So this could be a broad academic, okay, uh, or it's specific to, let's say you're doing some type of reading lesson, reading unit, uh, specific to their reading skills, what are their strengths and weaknesses in that area. And that's based on, that information is based on assessments that have been done previously. Then number three, you're going to identify and describe exceptional learners. So these are the ones that would be at the extreme end, either higher or lower within your class. I know you're all working with a range of students. So point out using initials, not real names, point out your higher level learners, you know, where, where are they? And then your lower level. So it just really gives a broad picture of the different scope, the whole scope of your class and what who you need to reach in this unit. Doesn't have to be complicated, could be, you know, two sentences, maybe three, uh, depending on how many students you're talking about, okay? 
Uh, at the conclusion of the class description, after the test score sheet, include a class groups sheet presenting the achievement level grouping of your learners. Okay. If you are already working in a small group, maybe you're not grouping it further for the unit. However, because most of you are working in a range, um, you may be providing slightly modified materials uh, or plans for certain levels within your classroom. That's your grouping. Even if there's only one student in each group because you have a really low, kind of a mid and a higher level learner, um, and then maybe somewhere in between. So you're creating some modifications based on those levels or you're using modifications based on those levels like, like a lot of you do using ULS then that's your grouping. And so you're going to talk about on the class group sheet each group. So maybe group one is just one person, but that's your group, okay? And then you're going to, you're just gonna list those groups and you're going to list them by achievement level. That's it, you can make a little table. You can just write a couple sentences explaining that. That's, that's all you need to do here, okay? This gives you a layout table-wise. You could do it like this. Now, I know most of our students are not in the average or above average range. This unit template is, is used broadly across the college, so um, can be used in a general education classroom to indicate your ranges. Some of your students, though, uh, especially those with autism, may fall in average or above average in this particular academic area. I don't know. I mean, some of our students do that. So if you feel like, well, my students aren't, are all below average, you can change those headers. That's fine. You could do, you know, like lowest, mid, uh, high level learner, uh, or you can label them one, two, three, something like that, low to high. Just give us an idea of those groupings. Okay. And then the one, two, three would just indicate the students. So you would put initials there. Um, so like if you only have one person in the group, then you delete two and three and you put the initials for that kid right there uh, in number one. Simple as that. Okay. Um, here's a space to kind of discuss what you, what you put in there. Brief description. You know, this JK is my lowest. He needs these modifications. Um, he, or he's working in this level of this topic area. And then you can go to the average section or your mid-level. The students in this group, blah, 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 need these types of modifications. They're working on these particular skills. That's what this means. You're really just analyzing um, all of those components, those strengths and weaknesses of your students. It's to prepare you to develop this, this unit. A lot of you, I think go about your practice of teaching, understanding all of this, you're internalizing all of this information and you're building your lessons based on that knowledge because you know your students. You think to yourself, oh wait, I gotta make sure I provide, or maybe you're automatically embedding it, you know, some extra feedback, some additional um, tools for certain students. But what I'm asking you to do is actually lay this all out on paper. So you're taking it out of that, and yeah, it's, is, it, is it more work? Yes, I'm not expecting you to do this all the time. This though is a good practice for you so that you are able to articulate uh, why you are incorporating the components of the unit that you incorporate, how you are actually looking at each individual student and involving their strengths and um, helping to work to build their weaknesses. You know, you're breaking it down by student for this. That's what this is all about, okay? So if you have any further questions after watching this, please let me know. We can certainly um, discuss it more. Thanks everybody. Good luck.